Dominic sent me this photo, asked me to edit it, and I did. Look, here's the end result. I've got one special thing you don't see over here. Stick around to find out. Let's go. All right, so first things first. I want to show you the histogram and how you can change this, right? Because we've basically got two extremes. We've got a very bright part and we've got a very dark part. Now, if we open up the color picker menu and then select this here with the right mouse button, we see this box appear, right? And now, because this box is selecting this part, we see that the histogram is changing. Same if we select this. And the outcome of this matches with the image because right now, the darkest parts are the most dominant. And if we select this, the brightest part are the most dominant. Right, I'm going to use this to edit this photo. So I'm going to focus on here. I'm going to bring up the exposure of this image. Now, the problem we have over here, so let me just close this one down, right mouse button, close it down. The problem we have over here is that this becomes much more overexposed and I don't want that. So I'm going to open up the exposure module because that has been activated due to the things we just done. And I'm going to go here to the mask and I'm going to use a gradient mask. I'm going to click it. Now make sure that the dot is at the part you want to be edited and then the other part on the part you don't want to be edited. So the arrow and there you go. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to drag it down and let's feather and blur it out. And this already looks a lot better. So let's close that one down and move on to the next one, which is the color balance RGB module. So I'm going to activate it. I'm just going to work in the masters tab. And right now this image is very yellow. And he actually asked me how he was able to replicate this. So like the warm color in this JPEG, right? But I'm not going to do that because I figured this looks a lot better using different colors. So I'm going to change the hue to a more morning or late evening kind of look because of the reds in the clouds and the sunset. And I always think that looks pretty awesome when I see it in the sky because I really like that orange look. Now I'm also going to add in some global vibrance which will add in some colors throughout the entire image and I'm going to add in some contrast because the image was very dull before that. You see it's very dull. We're going to add it and now it looks a lot more lively. Right. Then we've got the perceptual saturation grading, which affects both the luminance and the chroma dimensions in a perceptual space proportionally to its input value at a constant hue. So rather than uh, changing that in the entire image with the global saturation, I'm just going to increase the saturation in the shadows and I'm going to drop it down in the highlights. And now this is where the magic happens because we're going to create a new instance. And within this new instance, we are going to change the perceptual perceptual brilliance grading. Now the perceptual brilliance grading affects both the luminance and the chroma dimensions in a perceptual space proportionally to its input value at constant hue and in a direction orthogonal to the saturation. Now I'm going to drop this down but what happens is the entire image becomes more dark and that's something I don't want to. So I'm going to add in another gradient mask. So here we go. I'm going to click it and like I said the dot has to face the area that will be affected and then the arrow the area that won't be affected. Now I'm going to drag this around and now the sky has become more dark and not this lower part. Now you can increase or decrease the feathering by holding the shift and then scrolling your mouse wheel button away or towards you. And I always like to make sure that I feather and blur my mask to have a better overflow from one side of the image to the other one. And in this case, I'm also, let me select this one, I'm also going to decrease the masking opacity and I'm going to decrease the mask contrast to make it more soft around the edges. Right. Moving on to the next one, uh, which is, I want to add in some more contrast again. And in this case, I'm going to add the local contrast. I'm going to activate it. You see that more contrast is being added to the image. I don't think that's still enough. So I'm going to add in some more. But now this doesn't look good anymore, right? So once again, we're going to use the same mask. I'm going to click here, drag this around to have the right side of the image being affected. Move this around. There we go. Blur it again. Feather it again, decrease the opacity, decrease the contrast, and let's close this down. Now we're probably halfway there, so let's have a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here's what we started with, and here's the after. We already opened up the image quite a lot, and this is going to be the end result. Now you see it's much more warmer than this one. I see that this is more brighter as well, so we are going to address that. First up, let's get rid of some noise. So I'm going to activate the denoise profile module, and I'm going to select the 
contrast equalizer module. Now, if you want to know everything there is to know about denoising your image, I've made a separate video about that. Be sure to scan the QR code you see right now. That will take you to that video or check the description down below. And apparently I made a mistake in that video because in the Luma tab, you need to drag these upwards rather than downwards. So just drag them up slightly because the effect is quite strong and we don't want to lose the image entirely. We're going to create a new instance. We're going to open up the Chroma tab and we're going to drag these down. So in the Luma tab, you drag them up and in the Chroma tab, you drag them down. So now the image has been denoised quite some more and we've hopefully rectified the error I made in that other video, but be sure to check it out because it's still very, very useful. Now let's create some more magic by using the low pass module. I'm going to activate this. I'm going to increase this, but hey, where's my image? Uh, I don't know, but let's go here. Let's go to overlay. There we go. But this looks horrible. What is going on? Well, we need to move it the other way around. Uh, we don't need that much saturation. Let's increase the brightness. And with all the other modules as well, it sometimes takes some fiddling around, right? So rather than showing you that in this video, I usually just tweak some things around. And then when I like the result, that's when I show you. Now we're almost done with the low pass. We need the same mask again so that it looks as good as it should look. Here we go again. Feather, blur, decrease the opacity and decrease the contrast. Now, rather than creating a new mask every time, you can also use the shape used. However, I think I found a bug because when I did that, the entire image just went bust. I tried it a couple of times. I tried it several times. I tried it with different modules and the output is very weird. So I might make a different video about that, the bug in Darktable. But be sure to just click a new gradient mask to be sure to not run into that issue. We've got some diehard Darktable fans on my channel. Maybe you guys know why that is. Uh, let us know in the comment section down below. But for now, let's continue. And then go to the crop module because I tried everything to get this to look a lot better, but it's very, very hard. So rather than just breaking my head over this, I figured I'm going to re composite this image. I'm going to use the freehand. I'm going to use the roster. Now mine's in red and I've actually got a question on my channel asking how I was able to get this in red and you can change it here. So gray, you can change it to red, you can change it to green, whatever color you like. In this image, I would actually prefer green because that looks a lot better. Now another option, how you can do this is by going here and then clicking your right mouse button and that will allow you to change the colors as well, right? So you don't need a module for that to do that. You can just do it here as well. Uh, I'm going to crop this image. I'm going to crop this out as much as I can. And I figured I placed the car on the rules of thirds. And this image actually has a nice Easter egg in it, which is this plane in the background in between this bridge. I like that a lot. Don't ask me why. It just looks good. Now the image is a little bit blurry, so we're going to add in some sharpening. And then as a final touch, I want to give it more saturation. So I'm going to open up another color balance RGB one. I'm going to click a new instance. And then in that I'm going to add in some global saturation to make this image more warm. Now you can do this however you like to. Now, before I show you a before and after, this is important to do because if you take a snapshot right now and you select it and you select the first step, you'll see that you can't really compare it right because we've got the old version and then we've got our crop version so in that case i would just suggest to go back to the crop module deselect that one so you will see the entire image again then you take a snapshot then you go back to the first one so what you started with select the snapshot and there you go now you can compare it the right way 